the level of support that parents and family and friends will go to, to show their CHD warriors that they support them and they're willing to put ink to skin in order to do that. And I think that that's just wonderful. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna. I am Anna Jaworski and your host. I'm also a heart mom to an adult who was born with a single ventricle heart and who is 27 years old. This is the reason I am the host of this podcast. Today's show is entitled Beyond the Scar, Bonding with our CHD Children. Matt Bakke is married to his wife, Lauren, and together they have a 10-year-old son, Jack, and a four-year-old daughter named Everly, who was born with a critical congenital heart defect. Matt went viral on the internet after having a scar tattoo on his chest to match Everly's so she wouldn't feel alone. His wife Lauren followed suit the same day, getting an EKG tattoo on her left arm. Their unique tattoos helped them to raise awareness of CHD and remind other families that they are not alone. The Bakis live in Crystal Lake, Illinois, where Matt is a commercial insurance salesperson, and Lauren stays home to take care of her family's needs. Everly attends preschool and loves to dance. They recently celebrated her half birthday with a trip to Disney on Ice. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, Matt. Thanks for having me. Boy, a trip to Disney on Ice. That sounds like fun. It was. It was a very nice time. You know, half birthdays, you got to go big. <laughs> Why not? I think we should go big all the time. <laughs> I agree. Why wait till the real thing? You know, let's chuck it up every six months. Let's do something fun, right? Absolutely. You've made such a stir, Matt, with your tattoo. And you've been the topic of a number of articles and shows online. But perhaps not all of my listeners know who you are. So can you tell us a bit about your background and your family? Of course. So Yes, I am Matt Bakke, 38 years old, living in the Chicagoland area here in Crystal Lake. I have a four and a half year old daughter, Everly, who was born with a combination of some pretty rare congenital heart defects, including interrupted aortic arch, aortic stenosis, sub aortic stenosis, hypoplastic bicuspid aortic valve, and ASD, as well as a large posterior malaligned VSD. So oh, wow. she, yeah. That is a rather unusual combo, isn't it? It is. It's like we got the lucky draw. It was one in 100,000 for just the interrupted aortic arch. And then when you mix the others in, it became even rarer of a combination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Everly ended up having four open heart surgeries by the time she was one year old. And those came from having the Norwood surgery at three days old. She had a BT shunt replacement at four months old and the Rastelli procedure at 11 months old, which during her recovery, actually, she ended up getting an infection in her lungs and they had to end up cutting her chest back open to clean that out. So that's how we ended up with four open heart procedures. That's a lot. Poor baby. Yeah, she's been through the ringer, but she is a tough cookie, let me tell you. You would never know by looking at her. I was looking at some of your other interviews and she always has this beautiful smile on her face and she just looks so healthy yeah she's resilient really if you didn't know the story if you didn't see the scar that protrudes from her chest you would really never know she's your typical active chatty four and a half year old (laughs) that just is always on the go one of the really neat things is trying to see life through her eyes because she gets so excited about some of the smallest, simplest things. But I feel like that's an important part of who she is. And perhaps it's because of everything that she's undergone. But she is the light. She's a great, great girl. Yeah. Oh, I just love that. So getting that tattoo was such a sensitive and puny action. Have you always been that kind of a person who's been empathetic to others? Before we started the interview, you were saying you were one of five. So it looks like you've had a lot of experience being empathetic. Well, empathetic, punching bag, I don't know. (laughs) If you ask my wife that question, she would say that since Ev came along, I've become a saucy. So perhaps that means before then I wasn't. I guess it's open (laughs) to interpretation. But I suppose with Ev and with the journey that we've undertaken, it certainly has changed my perspective to try to 
put myself in other people's shoes and be much more understanding. And yeah, I guess just try to think outside of myself more than I ever had before. Because when something like this happens, it really does kind of shift your perspective of things that were important that aren't any longer, or perhaps they've fallen down the priority list. But it's really just one of those things where kind of seeing where we've gone through and how we can help and support Ev and then kind of taking that approach and looking at other families that perhaps don't have the same amazing support system that we're so fortunate to have and just see how we can try to better those experiences for others. That is so wonderful. And to hear that you have such a great support system. So you were telling me you have four other siblings. Are your siblings nearby? Are they part of your support group or your parents? Yeah. So to be honest with you, I think the biggest players here are my in-laws. My mother and father-in-law, I feel like I married into the jackpot family because they are just such wonderful people. They live right down the road from where we live. So they're always around and helpful as can be. And my wife's aunts and uncles and cousins, same thing. For the most part, they're fairly local. My parents are local. My sisters and brothers are all pretty much in the area. I have one that kind of meanders down to Arizona, but that gives us a place to go if we need to escape the winter. We even aside from family, just the group of friends that we really surrounded ourselves with, both folks from before all of this happened that have really embraced the situation and lended their support. And then others that we've met along the way that have gone through and are going through similar situations has been fantastic because it's those folks that when you talk about some of the struggles, they get it. They've been through it. Yeah. And so you can really kind of bounce things off one another for the greater good, if you will. Absolutely. And I think today we're actually able to address mental health issues like body image issues. And even what you're talking about, just that support, that knowledge that there is somebody else out there and that you're not in this alone which I think is a really scary thing. How important do you feel it is for us to address these issues, especially with young children? I think that addressing the mental health aspect is very, very important. And especially here being May and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, it's certainly an important topic. And I feel like the earlier that you can address it and have the younger folks embrace it and then be open with some of the struggles that they're going through, it helps because then they're not just internalizing things and perhaps elongating that struggle. And I think that that goes, to be honest with you, with both Ev in our little circle here, some of her struggles and challenges of how to deal with the fact that she has the zipper scar and, and things of that nature. But then also to Jack, it's a balancing act of ensuring that his emotional needs are met and that he feels like he is just as important because he is to the overall constructs of the family and having him be part of the fun and the positivity that goes along with everything. It's very, very important. Home Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home Tonight Forever. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Matt, let's talk about going public with your tattoo scar. I've noticed over the last 10 years that more and more heart parents, heart spouses, and heart warriors are getting tattoos related to their congenital heart disease. Do you think these tattoos are a reflection of some trend in our culture? It's a good question. Before I made the decision to get my particular tattoo, to be honest with you, I didn't really give it a 
whole lot of fun. I never had a foray into getting tattoos or anything like that in the past. I, I wasn't really aware of what other possibilities or options there was. I just had in my mind, I wanted to get something that would be as similar to what she has just for the simple fact that if she was never feeling self-conscious, she could look to me and see that there's something similar on me and it's no big deal and we can be zipper buddies. But I do feel like tattoos in general are are becoming more commonplace in American and and international society for folks that either believe in something deeply or for whatever reason want to express it on their skin. They're doing so and it's the uniqueness of any individual expressing themselves and that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because when I first became aware of people doing this, it was mostly moms. But of course, I belong to a whole bunch of heart moms, heart moms, heart mama groups on Facebook. Sure. <laughs> so I'm in touch with a lot of moms. And I have even seen mothers who have tattooed hearts that look like anatomical hearts with their children's heart defects on them. And they do it over their own heart. I've seen women do what your wife did with the EKG. It's really interesting how many creative hearts I have seen. I have seen some women with some gorgeous hearts that have all kinds of intricate things surrounding the heart. I just find it fascinating that so many people seem to be getting heart tattoos, but I haven't seen anyone else get one with a scar. And I think that's really interesting that you chose to do a scar and not a heart. Yeah, and I feel like the tattoo artist was also taken back by when I asked him, what does he think about the design and my thought? And it seemed like I kind of caught a deer in a headlight because he's like, I've never done a scar tattoo before. And it was someone (laughs) that I feel like had been doing this for some time. So that was neat to kind of have a unique experience on his part as well. But after this whole thing kind of went viral, like you said, I did also take a look at some other CHD related tattoos that folks have had. And I agree with you. It is Really awesome, the level of support that parents and family and friends will go to, to show their CHD warriors that they support them and they're willing to put ink to skin in order to do that. And I think that that's just wonderful. Yeah, I think it is too. One of the things that makes me giggle a little bit is I actually know of at least one, but I think it's more like two or three heart warriors who had heart tattoos with their anatomical defect on it and they've they've teased that okay this way nobody has to open them up to see what's wrong with their heart (laughs) that's funny that's too funny there you go i think it's so funny but wow a lot of people i think they're feeling that sense of identity Mm -hmm. and having that heart there you can just see that oh my goodness we have something in common without even having to say a word and i think that's what your scar tattoo does For your daughter, it's like, it's okay. Daddy has one too. And it takes away that negative stigma. Right. It was trying to, I suppose, normalize it to a degree. And again, my thought being that as she grows older, she's likely to be more self-conscious, more self-aware as we all tend to be. And then if we're ever at the beach or the pool and she, for whatever reason, feels that it's out of place or that she's uncomfortable, I'll be right there with her so that she's not alone in that regard. Yeah. It's also interesting, too, because we've had her embrace that uniqueness. So that is a positive thing, right? Because you want her to see that that is truly her badge of courage. That's her zipper. Mm-hmm. It goes you know, up and right. down as needed to take care yep. of her heart and that she's been through the ringer, but she's come out on the other side and she's as tough as nails. Yeah, I love that. So now you're this public figure in the CHD community. Can you tell me how becoming a CHD ambassador has affected your life? I will give all the credit in the world to my wife, Lauren, in this regard, because she has really stepped up in terms of advocacy and being an awareness champion and being very involved with other CHD foundations and organizations. I feel like I just ride her coattails and that's totally fine. So the fact when this tattoo came to bear was completely out of nowhere. In fact, that day I got the tattoo. My wife followed suit with her first one as well. Uh, a very seemingly harmless post on Facebook because my wife's thought was people are not going to believe this. We actually did this because we're not tattoo people. And so the hospital that Everly goes to saw it and asked Lauren if they could use it in some internal correspondence. And of course we said, sure. In the name of 
awareness, of course, we're happy to help and say yes to the hospital for everything that they've done. So apparently someone from their media team saw it as well at the hospital and asked if they could use it for outfacing purposes. And again, our response was yes, of course, if it's going to help with awareness in the hospital, sure. And so when they did that, we didn't really think anything of it. They had said that perhaps media will pick it up. Perhaps they won't. It ended up that everyone decided to run with it. And it was crazy. <laughs> the month of February was a whirlwind. And since it came out, it's more just the same of just embracing the platform of nothing else to truly try to spread awareness of CHD. Because it is such, I feel like, an underfunded and under understood disease that's so prevalent. And anything that we can do, any small token that we can offer to help the greater good there is certainly something that we are more than happy to do and be part of. I just love that. It seems to me that one of the traumas associated with CHD and multiple open heart procedures like what your daughter has had is that of body mutilation. I wonder if people getting tattoos is a way for them to kind of take control of the way their bodies are affected by CHD. How will you feel if Everly or Jack ever want to get a tattoo? You know, that's a neat perspective. And I think that the control aspect of that question is interesting because I feel like even as a family, and especially for Ed, because a lot of things that are done are outside of her control. You know, if it was up to her, she certainly would never have an IV or a pick line right. or obviously open heart surgeries. So yeah, having that degree of control or even controlled chaos is always a, mm-hmm. an ongoing struggle as a CHD family. That said, Jack actually has gone on record with saying that as soon as he turns 18, he is going to get a matching tattoo of mine so that he also has a scar for Ed. We'll see if he holds to that, but he's been pretty (laughs) steadfast in that sentiment. And with Everly, I guess if her personality now is any harbinger for what's to come, I'm sure that she will be not hesitant to get any sort of tattoos or piercings or whatever her little heart desires. (laughs) <laughs> she sounds like a fierce young lady, a force to be reckoned with. She is a spitfire and it's great though. My wife says that she has a lot of spice and spunk and I think it's a good thing when you're going through what she's gone through and will go through. I feel like having that edge to you is super important. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a double-edged sword. My heart warrior is as stubborn as a day is long and I'm so thankful. Because had he not been the stubborn little boy and young man that he was, he wouldn't have recovered from what he's had to go through. And I think probably the same is true for Everly. They have to have a certain amount of spice. They have to have that strong desire to live, that strong will to survive. And I'm not indicating that those who don't make it didn't have that. Unfortunately, it's not just the will to survive that enables our kids to keep moving forward. There are lots of forces that are outside their control. But I do find that the ones that do make it are often spitfires. (laughs) A thousand percent. And and sometimes I have to stop myself and just remind myself how fortunate it is that she has that trait when sometimes it's not exactly, oh, good for that moment. (laughs) Yes, it's not exactly desirable. 24-7, 24-7, but there we are. Correct. So it's fun to see that they're not afraid to express who they are and that they are able to come out the other side. Because especially for me, my son is 27, so he's much older than little Everly is. And mental health was not really talked about much. But now we're starting to recognize the effects of these multiple procedures, seeing the doctor so often, having to go in and out of the hospital. For some kids, they have pacemakers and ICDs and all of those different devices and multiple trips and multiple specialists that they have to see. It does affect their mental health. Absolutely. And I've seen firsthand the PTSD that uh, has been stricken with, or however you want to say it, just due to all of the interactions that have been more bad than good, even though obviously the medical professionals and doctors and nurses are wonderful. It's just she associates it with being away from home or being poked or just doing things that she doesn't want to. Actually, she was just recently admitted to the hospital for three days with a para-influenza virus, which to you or I, it's just a common cold, but it knocked her out of her butt. And just seeing her 
and just the trepidation and the true fear of knowing that she had to have an IV administered and being at home. It's not fun. And those are things that really hit home. And if anything, I feel like are some of the hardest things about being the parent is to see your, your child just go through that and know how fear-stricken they are in that moment. It really does take a toll on their mental well-being. And so you try your best when they're home to rationalize as best you can with a four and a half year old, but then to try to do other things to make it associated with other positive things. Like we have a number of dolls that have all of the goods in terms of medical equipment. So we have a, like a cabbage patch doll that has a nasal cannula and one that has an oxygen tank so that she can be the doctor and and say, okay, you know, we're going to do this today. Or we're going to do an echocardiogram and here we're going to rub some jelly on your belly and here's the paddles and the nodes. So we try to have her kind of go through the paces herself so that she can have a degree of control in that small little playtime mm-hmm. just to try to help her get through some of that. Because again, as a four and a half year old, it's difficult to understand why it has to happen to her. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect or CHD community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, a handbook for parents, will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more. Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Wow. I think that's so brilliant. Yay for Cabbage Patch Dolls, that they actually have that available. Amazing. Yeah, it is neat. And then too, Lauren's uncle is a doctor. So some of the little extra oxygen lines and things like that, we were able to get just for the purposes of her to have firsthand experience tinkering with it. And again, like I said, her being the nurse or the doctor so that she can get more comfortable with what things are and what they do and why they do what they do. Yeah, I love that. Do you use those dolls to help explain to Everly what her heart condition is so that she can internalize through play what it is that she has? Absolutely. Yep. We've done that both with the dolls that she has, as well as she has a couple of stuffed animals that one is a teddy bear that has a zipper. And so when you zip it down, it has the heart that has the stitches on there. And so That's kind of where the whole turn zipper came to bear here at the house in terms of how we use that. She knows if you ask her, what is she working with in terms of her heart? She says, I have a special heart that needs help. And so, again, trying to frame it as it's special, it's it's unique. It's something that she was born with and that she's going to have. And it's not a bad thing. It just needs a little bit of assistance, if you will. And so I think that that definitely has helped her understand to a degree because We want her to have a degree of understanding of what she has and it's special, but also too, at the same time, she doesn't need to know all the intricacies of it. She's four and a half. I mean, that's really young to understand everything, but I was the same way with my son growing up. I tried to make it as natural as I could, just like you. I have a child who's older. I have two sons. So just like you're dealing with, we have the older brother. And having a younger sibling with a heart defect definitely impacts that older sibling. There's no question to me that it definitely affected Joseph. In fact, when Alex was born, Joey was three. Mm -hmm. And gosh, those preschool years, they're so critical for developing self-awareness. But they're also a very imaginative time of development. And I was really afraid with Alex going into the hospital that perhaps three-year-old Joey had an uncharitable thought about his brother. Like, I wish he wasn't here anymore because for three years he had had his daddy and me all to himself. 
And I didn't want him to think that maybe if he would have had one of those thoughts, which would be completely normal, that that's why his baby brother was in the hospital. And I think it was a challenge for us to do what you were talking about, which is to make Joey still feel important, still feel special, because unlike you, we don't live in a big city. And we certainly didn't live in a big city when they were little. We lived way out in the country. So Alex's hospital was three and a half hours away by car. Mm. And that meant that Joey couldn't be with us. And we had relatives taking care of him. Did you have relatives taking care of your son so you could be with Everly at the hospital as much as you could? You know, Hannah, it seems like you and I had some big parallels here in terms of how we went through things with Jack as well. I mean, Jack was a little bit older when all this went down. He was oh, almost six. And it was just unfortunate because at first he was like, well, why isn't my little sister just coming home from the hospital? I thought that's how it works. He, he had to grow up pretty quickly and understand some really big, big person things, which to his credit, he did gracefully and wonderfully. And I think that even more so than he already was, it just made him such a compassionate young man who is so caring and tender and really looks out for her, even though they still have their sibling squabbles like any brother, sister will. At the end of the day, he's so caring and compassionate and empathetic. Those are incredible traits in any human, but for a 10 year old is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of 10 year olds don't want to have anything to do with their baby sister <laughs> or baby brother because they're too busy gosh, by 10, you're on your bike, you're really active with friends and doing lots of school activities and possibly doing wee blows, or at least my boys did, mm -hmm. wee blows and karate and so many other things that playing with a preschooler, it's not usually high on your priority list. Yes. I think we got a special boy, definitely. He is a really good brother to her. And the tough thing is, is when all this went down as well, is then COVID happened not too ah, long after that. So yeah. then the world kind of shut down again. So one of the really big struggles is having to navigate that situation where we want Ev and Jack to experience life, but they have to do it within the certain constructs of restrictions that we have just because of FCHD, but then also because of COVID. So it's almost like a double kick in the gut where you want them to live and experience things, but to do it in a safe environment has been tricky. Absolutely. And I understand that both you and Jackson are dealing with COVID right now. That is correct. We are COVID positive at the moment. How's that going for you? Are you having to quarantine away from Everly and Lauren? We're both vaccinated, so I, I believe that we don't have to quarantine by the books. However, as you know, with CHD, nothing is by the books. So right. yes, we are kind of isolated on Jack and Dad Island. And try our best to <laughs> I love that. not get Evie in the crosshairs of this because she's too young to have the vaccine at this point. And she's also just one that is more apt to get hit by any common illness. So sure. we want to avoid it as best we can. That is such a challenge. I commend you for working on that. I love that. Jack and Dad Island. That's <laughs> it's so cool. What advice do you have for other CHD dads and families? about teaching their children about their CHD in age-appropriate ways. And also, I love the fact that you were just talking about COVID. How do you help them to understand the seriousness of germs and all the things that we're having to deal with in our world today? Well, I feel like our children got a crash course in that because of, again, with Abby being immunocompromised with her CHD, we kind of went through the COVID procedures and protocols before it was even a thing. I feel like right. we, you know, we were early adopters, if you will. Yeah, I'm right there with you. In fact, a yeah. couple of decades earlier. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, we knew what it was like to get home, scrub in, change your clothes, use a hand sanitizer and soap and water. So we did that and it's very important. So our kids, probably more than most others, understand how to be careful and how to try to avoid germs as best you can and try to set yourself up as best you can to be healthy. And then in terms of teaching our heart warriors out there just about how to either cope or to even understand their CHD, I feel like to do it in a play-involved method, like I had mentioned earlier with the dolls and trying to set role-playing up where it's a positive experience or where you can help them 
grab some degree of control, even if it's in that yes. play environment, because then they're the doctor there and the little doll is the patient. So teaching her, this is what this does. And, oh, you're going to do that test. Well, here's why they do that. It's to make your heart healthy or whatever the case may be. Doing it and framing it in that positive frame of light has worked well. Because if you ask Ev, she will say with a positive note in her voice that she has a special heart. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Matt Bakke, for coming on the show today and talking to us about your tattoo and how getting that tattoo has really changed your life, thrown you into a spotlight that perhaps you weren't anticipating, but also sharing with us how you're teaching your daughter about her heart defect. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun, Anna. Thank you. Oh, it was fun for me too. And that's it for this week's episode, my friends. If you enjoyed this special episode of Heart to Heart with Anna, please check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash heart to heart. And remember, my friends, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have become inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart community. Heart to Heart with Anna with your host, Anna Jaworski, can be heard at any time, wherever you get your podcasts. A new episode is released every Tuesday from noon Eastern time.